What's up YouTube, this is Matthew here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at the best markets and zip codes to wholesale real estate. It's the start of 2022, it's still January, so it's so imperative that you choose a market, whether you're doing it virtually or in your backyard. So number one, we'll be looking at that raw data, looking at the cities and zip codes. And number two, I'm going to talk about what is a good way to market to that individual city and zip code. We'll be looking at how many wholesale deals, closures, fix and flip, or even rental property information happening in the market. So even if your city or zip code is not included on this list, how can you still market to your city or your zip code? And so we'll be going over all of that in today's video. So one more thing, a lot of you all watch my videos, but you are not subscribed. So be sure to subscribe to this channel and then like this video and comment down below if you have any questions or tell me actually what zip code or city are you marketing and whether it's fix and flips or wholesaling or buy and holds, whatever it is, let me know down below. All right, let's head right into the data. All right, so to look at the data first, we're looking at this website, My House Deals, and they collect information from their investors that they sell properties to. So this website, any investor can sign on and find investment deals. And so they're just collecting the data from around America from where their investor is buying from and what type of, you know, property information that they have and the, the zip codes that most investors are buying in the united states so it's my house deals i'll put a link down below and so this is specifically for third quarter of 2021 that they're looking at the different stats associated with that quarter also has second quarter up so just so, just so we can compare the different cities and the types of transactions that's been happening here so they have different types of transactions um, one of the new ones they have is motivated MLS. So these are investors that bought properties off the MLS because they were either discounted, uh, they were being sold as is, and an investor could have came in, swooped in into that deal and buy that property. So it looks up that data. It also looks at investor ready foreclosures. You know, uh, foreclosures definitely increased this quarter, the third quarter of 2021 compared to second quarter. We'll, we'll look at that soon and then wholesale deals, and then once again, motivated MLS deals. So in the third quarter, they had 62% of their deals come from wholesale deals. 35% came from investor ready foreclosures, right? And then the rest came from motivated, um, motivated MLS deals. And um, the reason why they have, I think, motivated sellers is they're just looking at investors that are buying directly from wholesalers. So um, it, it, it's, a, it's just a good gauge for us to understand where cash buyers are buying from so we can either market to those areas or those zip codes. Looking at second quarter, I just want to show you all something. So right here you have 89% of the deals came from, um, where is it, um, wholesale deals. So, and then only 5% came from foreclosures. And so you see how foreclosures are definitely increasing and more people are buying foreclosure properties. And we'll look at what type of cities are increasing their foreclosure deals, right? And yeah, it was very interesting looking at that data and it's mostly bigger cities, right? Um, like your Atlanta or, or Boston or LA areas. So this is second quarter, only 5% of transactions that investors were buying came from foreclosures compared to third quarter where it was 35%, right? Pandemic is not actually slowing down, but there's vaccines. Less people are, you know, thank God, you know, not dying as much, but, you know, uh, different banks and, and counties are now allowing uh, foreclosures and, and different things like that. So um, here are the top five markets for third quarter of 2021. Houston, number one, Dallas, number two, Chicago, number three, Atlanta, then Miami. Now, Chicago is a very surprising one for me. I wouldn't expect this one to be that high on the list. For example, you don't see like bigger cities like an L.A. or uh, Boston where the super high cost of living you know like houston and dallas yeah they're kind of expensive atlanta miami but a lot of investors are going there to buy properties and those are usually 
um, investor friendly states like Texas, Georgia, even some parts of Florida. But Illinois is definitely more on the tenant side than the landlord side. So surprising seeing it um, on number three. So second quarter of 2021, let's just look at the top five. We have Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, Washington, D.C., and Miami. So D.C. was on the list last quarter. And then Dallas and Houston switched. So this time Houston is number one. Dallas is number two. Deals per market. So you see foreclosures, MLS, motivated sellers, and wholesale deals. So in Houston, a lot of um, wholesale deals. Investors are just buying a bunch of deals from wholesalers there. And then a decent chunk of foreclosures. Uh, DFW, Dallas area. You have a lot of wholesale deals and then some MLS deal. Now, Chicago, the reason why they're so high is because of foreclosures. You see how much foreclosures were bought in Chicago from investors. And so that's the trend I was I was saying that might come to bigger cities like a Chicago, L.A., a Boston, you know, these high cost living areas that lean more towards tenant side they may start allowing foreclosures and that's when investors are going to swoop in and buy these foreclosures. And then you have Atlanta, not much foreclosures. And then you have Miami. Miami has a, a little bit of mix of the um, MLS and foreclosures. All right, so um, looking back at second quarter, not much uh, foreclosures happening. You see something shift from second quarter 2021 to third quarter 2021. There was way more foreclosures happening in third quarter and probably fourth quarter. We'll look at that data later, um, but I'm expecting more and more foreclosures coming through. So you all, if you can find a private money um, person that can you know, buy properties for you or some sort of cash that you have, because these are deals that you know are really hot. Okay, so let's go down into the different zip codes of these, these cities. So we said Houston is number one. So if you all are in the Houston area, be sure to look and take notes at these zip codes. So, uh, and they break it down by um, transaction type. So wholesale deals. So wholesalers look at these zip codes and go after them. You know, a lot of foreclosures were bought in these zip codes and motivated MLS. All right, so these are the zip codes that you have to look at, all right, in your area. And yeah, so Dallas was number one second quarter. Boom. All right, so next, number two is Dallas. We have motivated sellers, uh, MLS, foreclosures, and wholesale deals. And so um, you can kind of see the area that they're in, what type of properties. You know, they're talking about, let's say you drill into a prop stream. If you're interested in prop stream, link down below. You can find cash buyers looking to the data of different things about houses that were sold on public record, right? Chicago, number three. So foreclosures happen in these zip codes. And, you know, it kind of has the map of the different places. So it's probably, you know, a lot of it is not in the city, city of Chicago, right? Because maybe the city has more stricter laws about wholesale deals and maybe they're just so expensive in the in chicago so you have up here in skokie area we have melrose park down here and then some south suburbs down here that you can market to and then a bunch of wholesale deals also and then you have atlanta atlanta's going all around the area um you know i kind of noticed something like with a lot of these cities it's way more spread out than like in the heart of the city and maybe because there's a lot of commercial buildings like chicago there's not much but if you go outside the city there's way more deals happening atlanta you kind of see it a lot right here but i mean a lot is spread out across the the state not just in the main city and then you have miami um fort lauderdale area and these are the different zip codes associated with that so essentially you all that's what i look at and then they have a whole other list of different um um i guess it's cities and zip codes that you can look at so tampa bay was number six orlando la pretty high baltimore and then west palm beach and then they have a bunch of other things um other other cities that you all can look into and once again i'll put the um link to the article down below in the description so another thing that they have on this website 
is this information. So like for Atlanta, 24% of all wholesale deals posted happen in Atlanta, right? And so this, these areas represent, never, sorry, these represent 24% uh, of all wholesale deals. So 10% of all deals, wholesale deals that happen in Atlanta happen in a 30310 zip code, right? For Austin, for the Bay Area, for Chicago. So you all can go even deeper into the data to know which zip codes to market to. And like you see Jacksonville, like fit these two are so good like this this represent 30 percent of wholesale deals happening all right so if you're a wholesaler it may be competitive but people are making a ton of money all right so you all that was essentially what i wanted to talk about those different um cities and zip codes to look into right and you saw how a lot more foreclosures are happening especially in bigger cities so for people who say you can't wholesale in bigger cities or you know make money off of real estate you can obviously buy foreclosure and it's interesting that chicago has that law where you need a license in order to wholesale real estate so people are buying more foreclosures right there's still wholesale deals happening maybe because they're licensed or because they're doing double closes or some or other reason they're buying houses cash and different things like that so um in your market you all make sure you uh, kind of figure out who's flipping is it a rental market and different things like that and hopefully this data helped you all to market and give more clarity on where you should go in 2022 with your wholesale business all right you all hope you all have a great day and talk to you all later peace